The Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Okay, hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live at EMC World in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE, our flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host, Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. Our next guest is Sal DeSimone, VP and CTO of EMC's Advanced Software Division. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Happy to be here. Great to, to be great, back. Great to see you, welcome back. And obviously, Joe Tucci put a lot of pressure on you. He said, the uh, software-driven enterprise, software-led enterprise is all about the future. So, uh, what do you mean by that? Just, why don't you just give us your definition of software-led, software-defined. Yeah. I mean, part of what we're recognizing is the fundamental changes and shifts to the way people want to consume, deploy, and use IT. Um, and so, uh, a big key to that is to be able to bring the the convenience and the simplicity and the economics that people like with public cloud, but be able to deliver it in such a way that people can have it on their own premise, in full control, under their security. So kind of bring the, the best of both worlds. And a key enabler to all of that is to be able to deliver this infrastructure in a much more efficient and agile manner. And that leads towards you know, software-based solutions where more of the configuration, more of the function is in, is in software that's easy to configure and easy to tune, and less of it is in super, super specialized uh, uh, explain hardware. Explain to the folks, what does the advanced software division do at EMC? Because you know, Joe Tucci also explained you know, the innovation strategy was M&A and organic R&D. Are you in that R&D piece? Are you part of the product portfolio? What, what, just quickly explain the advanced so software So it's actually division. a uh, combination. So the, the advanced software division's charter within EMC is to, is to define the software-defined uh, strategy for EMC. We have several products that fall under our division. We have obviously Viper, the whole software-defined storage portfolio. We have the new Elastic Cloud appliance, uh, storage appliance. Um, we also have EMC's existing object storage systems, Atmos and, and Centera, and all of our storage resource management and network and data center management uh, products all brought together to kind of help solve this so problem. So I got to ask kind of a, I guess a generic open, but I guess complicated question is EMC talks about best of breed, nice product portfolio, low end, mid range, flagship, the normal stuff, but best of breed is what Goulden talks about. But yet, scale out open source is disrupting horizontally those known silos. How do you look at that disruptive force? Obviously commodity hardware is changing the game. We heard you know, Jeremy Burton saying, hey, we think software's going to be all the action. So you're in the software advanced group, you look at that trend coming down Main Street uh, tech land, what do you, what do you, how do you guys prepare? What are you guys doing differently? So first of all, we think we're really well positioned to be successful in this software defined world. We've actually started a lot of these efforts several years ago, so it's not like we just woke up yesterday and are, are trying to, to, to kind of figure out what to do. So um, I don't think the open source, the, the software on commodity necessarily changes any of the best of breed. Because at the end of the day, um, so you're saying you, you still best of breed can exist, coexist with the disruption? Even within the open source software on commodity um, marketplace, there's going to be better implementations than others with different characteristics, different price points, simpler to manage, harder to manage, higher performance, lower performance. When you're going to run different workloads, you need different characteristics in your storage system. So the fundamental physics aren't changing with software. Um, and the need to build systems that are engineered well is not changing. So even within the software world, there's going to be a large variety of, of software systems optimized for different price points for different workloads. So in that regard, it's not, it's not really fundamentally changing. Um, so I was, talking to a, I was talking to a big bank the other day, some practitioners I was speaking to, gave my speech, guy comes up to me afterwards, huge bank, one of the top banks in the world, and said, um, I want to talk to you about Viper. I said, oh, cool, great. I always want to talk about, you know, to a customer about some new stuff. <laughs> and, and he said, what I really want is an open source object store that really goes fast. He goes, but I can't get one. So really looking at, we, so we started looking at Viper. And you know, it looks good, some things, you know, we're not quite there, blah, 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 you know, now 2.0 has been announced. Right. Um, and then I said, okay, what's, what's driving it? Um, and he said two things. One is 
simplicity, and the other is basically simplicity. So we're, we think this is the future, is what he said. Uh, but at the same time, we want to we want a way to consolidate all the different platforms that we have in the organization. Are those the two big drivers that you're seeing? Is there one that outweighs the other? Is this the future of the, store, uh, of the storage business? Is this a way to consolidate the stovepipes or is it both? Both, and if we go back to um, last year when we announced the, the Viper strategy, there were really two different objectives that we had. One was for people within existing storage estate, let's provide mechanisms that help them operate that in a much more efficient way, essentially allow them to apply a cloud operating model to the gear they have. It's, it's not about buying a new storage system, not about forklifting, it's the stuff you have, let's give you ways to operate that more efficiently um, from a capacity, from a migration, from a provisioning. So that's one aspect which, which touches. Mm -hmm. The second thing that we're trying to solve with Viper though also is to build the next generation um, a storage stack, designed from the ground up, with these cloud and third platform properties, built in software, designed to be elastic, designed to be scalable, designed to do this and not sacrifice performance, not sacrifice geo protection and these other capabilities, and actually do those in a way that we provide our customers a bridge from where they are today to where they want to get to. And I think EMC as a company is uniquely positioned to actually bring customers along. So Sal, so help me understand this. So, so you've got some, you're building a stack, Right, mm -hmm. and, and it takes a long time to build a stack and get it functional and robust. But you've got some native uh, uh, HDFS, for example, to, you know, object, object store, HDFS block right, now. right, and, and and then as well, you inter you you accommodate uh, existing EMC and other right. uh, uh, platforms. Right. So we, we're going to have Brian Gallagher on t tomorrow, but I remember he answered this question at one point, and he's very open. You know, he's like embraces Viper. I'm like, aren't you, yeah. aren't you worried that you know this thing? He, he said his answer was. My job is to make sure that my stack keeps you know, outpacing the rest of the industry, be more robust. Yep. But, and, and your job is to catch up to them, <laughs> in a way. Isn't <laughs> On it? I mean, the it's, software it's side, it's to, to some a, extent. It's to accommodate so, them, yeah. but at the same time, yeah, but that, but, but okay, so that's my question is, but, are you building out a, a stack of comparable functionality that might take a decade that ultimately will be pure software? Or should we think that should we think about this differently? That no, you're going to always have to have a box to get that function, that great latest greatest function. So, so I think let me answer it in in uh, two different ways. So, again, going back to the kind of fundamental architectural separation of the control plane from the data plane, which is one of these fundamental principles that we came with uh, Viper. Yep. There's a lot of storage systems that have that have um, capabilities that are unique to those that serve a very specific purpose and are, are tailor-made. If you, if you have enterprise apps with, with relational databases and you want massive throughput and you want a tank that will never go, VMAX is what you should do. And, and it'll be a, a long time before any kind of software-based system running on random commodity can, can Even come close, compete to right. that with those, with those characteristics. Right. Now there's other workloads that you don't need the tank and you don't need that you could do with software. So there'll always be this, this mixture of platforms with, with important characteristics. So for customers with, a, with a, a, a corpus of existing storage on existing arrays, and as those arrays evolve in the future, we have Viper as a control plane that can bring automation. I mean, VMAC is not the, the simplest device to manage. It's got a lot of sophisticated features, but it's fairly complex. So in a VMAX world, Viper brings a significant amount of automation and uh, uh, you know, plugging into the various cloud stacks that makes VMAX sort of uh, 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 simpler to operate. So there's a lot of value Viper brings into VMAX. On the software side, we are trying to build out a next generation. There are workloads where those, those stacks are useful today. These stacks will evolve. The data services in those stacks will evolve over, over time, and, and we'll, see how it, we'll see how it plays out. But in the Golden Workload slide, what you just described covers a lot of that space. Your, yeah. your, your, your TAM is pretty damn big, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so you, you mentioned VMAX as an example, and that's kind of an edge application for you guys. The, what else don't you touch? You know, what, what else won't you drive a truck through in the next 10 years? I mean, it, it seems to me like you're very well positioned to knock down a lot of those workloads. Yeah, I mean, we want to we wanna be the next, <laughs> the, the state-of-the-art best software-based stack 
um, that drives EMC into the next generation. And so, and, and I, make, I want to make sure I'm thinking about this right. You, got, you separate the control plane and the data plane, which is the fundamental concept that you put forth last year at EMC World, but then within the data plane, there's still a strong connection today between the hardware and the, and the stack. Right, but now but as, we, as we grow and mature our software stack, right. and that the fact that we now support running this software stack on commodity hardware, we're starting to expand the choice and, that customers and, have. And, and that is the future of storage as you see yeah. it. Is that fair? Yeah. I don't want to put words Absolutely. in your mouth, but essentially that stack running on commodity hardware. Awesome. <laughs> so. Okay, so explain to me the difference between Scale IO, vSAN, and Viper real quick. Because I mean, Viper's more of a broker across the platform, right? I'm just trying to, you brought up that earlier, so like, how do I, if a customer wants to look at Scale IO, vSAN, and, okay. and Viper? Let's take Scale IO and Viper. So again, Viper is two different pieces. There's the yep. Viper control plane, which is all the automation orchestration. There's the Viper data plane, which we had originally object in HDFS data services. There's now Viper block, software-based data service, which is Scale IO. Scale IO is the implementation okay. of, of Viper block data service. So it Scale IO is the block implementation for, in Viper. In Viper, for okay. software okay. data data plane. Now Scale.io and, and vSAN are really fundamentally trying to solve the same problem, which is how do you build a server-based SAN? Take a bunch of servers with disks, Ethernet connections, and basically Create pool, a pool and aggregate yeah. these, and turn these Linux nodes with disks into, or not Linux in the case of uh, vSAN, <laughs> it's ESX, but, but yeah. turn commodity nodes into a, a shared pool. So at some fundamental uh, conceptual level, they're the same. But if from an implementation, they're very different because the starting points were different. With vSAN, it's very ESX, vCenter focused, a very tight coupling and integration into the VMware stack, which is, which is very nice. The, the scale IO Viper block point, we're looking at storage as a, as a, as a horizontal. So this kind of server SAN, not just for VMware, but so for KVM, but for So can you geo-distribute HDFS and block and protect it? Yes. And objects. And ob objects. And objects, right. <laughs> Now let's and not a, <laughs> yes. Go ahead, go yes. ahead. It's also object, HDFS, and geo block. and block. Yes. All geo distributed and protected. Yes. On Viper, with Viper. Yes. Now, the, the, the interesting thing, a geo is a whole topic we could talk about. <laughs> but when we, when we look at the innovations and the, the, the truckload of patents that we're filing around Viper, our geo implementation, we feel, is, is state of the art and kind of leapfrogs um, where, where any other uh, comparable um, uh, solution is because with geo there's always two competing big trade offs competing forces big right? it's like, always, it's right. like do I have local access to data for fast access yeah. um, but then how much storage capacity am I using globally yeah. to achieve that right yeah. so you have you have schemes on one end which are I have five you know if I have five sites I have I have five copies of the data in each site I get very fast local access but it's 5x overhead there's the other extreme where you have geo er erasure coding type schemes where- Very efficient. Very efficient, but, but I got to stitch together <laughs> these objects and yeah. slow. And so some of the breakthroughs we made in Viper is to kind of bring the best of both worlds. And we have some unique intellectual property that we've developed which uses a combination of local erasure coding and geo compaction algorithms, which are, which are brand new, which allow us to do for, a, for say five sites, the overall storage overhead, 1.67, so close to erasure coding, mm. yet every site has a full local copy of its data, no WAN traffic. So that's really amazing that we can do those two things and, and this is one of, the, one, of the, one of the reasons when you asked about, well, you know, storage software on commodity, everything's equal, well, everything's not equal, right? Because we have some of these capabilities that are unique intellectual property that we bring that other software-based things running on so commodity So you can still differentiate have. in this open scale-out commodity gear. Absolutely. So clients want to play with some scale-out low-cost gear, you guys can drop into like building block. We can do that and we can provide them with geo-distributed, active-active, Object, HDFS, access to the same, I mean there's a whole bunch of capabilities that we bring to the table. Yeah, the object in unique. HDFS geo is pretty cool. It's, geo it's very cool. Yeah. So, so we got to talk about, before happy. we run out of time, we got to talk about the cloud in the box, the elastic cloud storage appliance. Right. You got a software division, you sell them boxes? 
<laughs> so we're EMC, we can't help ourselves, right? <laughs> no, but actually, if you, if you, is it a box you, as a service? Is it in the cloud? <laughs> no, no, it's a box. Okay, you can install. So you can duplicate different. the cloud. <laughs> on so, <laughs> so we have a whole spectrum of customers who want to run storage software on commodity. Some want to buy software, buy their own hardware, and and build things. Right. Others are not interested in in building science projects. They want the the convenience and the TCO of software on commodity, More but solution. they would prefer to yeah. buy a system. Yeah. So what we've done is give people choice. It's the same Viper software running on commodity hardware, your choice, whether it's on ECS appliances or your own, you can mix and match in a, in a, a given deployment. So we're just giving customers more and more choice. On and a, is it really, what is it, 28 to 30% cheaper than public cloud? That, that's a point in time Is that too cheap math in there? But no, 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 this <laughs> is actually, and, not, and when we do those computations, it isn't just the, the capital cost, but it also brings into, you know, what's your power cost, what's your admin cost, what's your cooling cost, so it's a, it's a really a, a TCO measurement, because when, when people go to public cloud, they don't need data centers, they it's don't a need, service it's cost. a service, it's a line item. So we're comparing apples to apples in that regard, and we are highly competitive. Um, and from a feature set, we have a differentiated set of data servers, Active, Active Geo, the, all these functions, um, which really have our stack leapfrog what these public and the, clouds And the demand, am I right, is coming from uh, organizations that essentially want to duplicate public cloud capabilities, public cloud flexibility, economics. economics. and convenience. Yeah, but they don't want to go off-site. Yeah, they want, they want choice. And I think we're beginning to offer some solutions that, uh, give, that give people those uh, those Sal, thanks so for coming on theCUBE, we really appreciate it. I want to give you the final word. Share with the folks out there why this Great. year is so important for you guys. What's going on right now that is such a game changer and why is it so important? I mean, so from an overall EMC perspective, we came out last year and announced Viper as our strategy. We hadn't announced any product yet. So there's a lot of skepticism of, well, is EMC a hardware guy? Yeah. So <laughs> we went through last year, we released Viper when we said the first version. Um, now we're coming out with the second version and I think this is really important because as we hit each of these releases, customers begin to tri triangulate, not just what we say, but what we're actually d delivering and as we get multiple um, uh, re releases with, with greater and greater expanded functionality, hey, people can start to draw this, this curve and triangulate and say, hey, these, these guys might actually, might, might actually pull it off. So I think this is a very important year for us to bring these new, new products that are highly differentiated, very strong TCO, and, and basically prove to the marketplace that uh, the EMC hardware guys really know what the heck they're doing when it comes to storage software. Sal, CTO, okay. EMC, Advanced Software, thanks for coming with us. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with our next guest, live in Las Vegas for EMC World 2014, we'll be right back.